Hi again. We're uh, back and we're going to talk now about uh, electrical circuits and Ohm's law. So in order to create a circuit you need a voltage source and a conductive path and it's always good to have some kind of load or some kind of resistance here to do some work. Otherwise we have what's called a short circuit and that's not a good thing. Uh, that can start fires, etc. It's an uncontrolled situation. So we need a, a complete conductive, conductive path to form a circuit. Here we see our voltage source is the battery. We have conducting wires to the bulb, to one side of the bulb, bulb through the filament, out the other side of the bulb and back to the battery. So there's our complete path and then through the battery again. So current flow is, again, it's, uh, it's in the direction of positive charges, which are electron holes. So as this arrow indicates, the flow is in this direction, oh, clockwise. This is a uh, kind of a neat applet or animation. It shows, uh, uh, here's the uh, is a mechanical analogy of uh, electric circuit. So here we have a kind of a uh, escalator or a, uh, you know, like the first part of a roller coaster where you have the lift part brings you up the hill. So here we have this um, a little escalator lifting the charges up the hill and they come around here and they flow down the hill but when they do that they do some work so we're giving them a these charges a path back to the bottom of the escalator but in order to get there they have to uh, do some work for us in terms of uh, turning this little wheel so the height here is analogous to the, the voltage on the battery the higher the height the greater the voltage Okay, so there's there's that, uh, and this brings us to Ohm's law. Well, Ohm's law relates the uh, the three circuit uh, quantities that you're familiar with: voltage, current, and resistance. But we want to consider a water circuit analogy again. If you have a, a water circuit, uh, have a, a tank of water up at some height. Well, the higher that tank is, the more work it can do, the greater the, the flow will be, the greater the pressure will be in the, um, the water exiting the, uh, uh, the tank. So that's analogous to the voltage. Height, the height of the tank is uh, related to the uh, voltage increase. And if you have a high, as the, the height gets hot, uh, greater, uh, the current would increase. Let's take a look at what happens with the resistance. If you um, decrease the resistance, well, that also is going to tend to increase the, the flow or current of water or uh, um, charge carriers, which are electrons. So Ohm's law says if you apply these rules, uh, I equals V over R. Now, again, if the voltage gets greater, the pressure gets greater, the current increases. So if V gets bigger, I gets bigger. If R gets smaller, then I gets bigger. So resistance goes down, current goes up. Voltage goes up, current goes up. And there's a kind of a neat little mnemonic. You can do this particular and perhaps familiar uh, little equation reminder. What you need to do here is cover up the one you want to find. So you want to find I, cover that up. And you can see you've got V over R. And if you want to find V, well, V equals I R, which is I times R. So there you go. All right, so if you do a plot in a circuit, uh, voltage versus current, what would that look like? Well, as we do that, so as voltage goes up, current would go up, and you get this linear relationship. What do you suppose the slope of that line is? Indeed, it's resistance. Resistance is the ratio of V over I, so V against I, that's the, the slope here. That's resistance. Now, not all resistances are linear. In fact, if they're not, that is, if they draw more current uh, eventually or less current, this line would curve somehow one way or the other. And we call that a non-ohmic um, device or material. That is, it's, it does not stay linear. So let's take a look at some other graphs of some other devices. Now a bulb is an example of a non-ohmic device. So we plot in this case, well, we switch, but I versus V. And you can, you've got a, a linear region, but after a while this starts to curve. So as it gets, the bulb gets hotter, uh, the resistance goes up and it draws less current. 
and here's a plot of so what would that look like here as the current goes up um, gets or the resistance would go up in a nonlinear fashion and in both directions current can flow either way so it would look something like that perhaps Ooh, I wonder what that is there sorry okay so current voltage graphs let's take a look at uh, something called a diode a diode is a device, semiconductor device, that lets current flow in one direction only. So, for example, uh, negative voltages would uh, not allow current to flow. But as soon as we get positive voltage, we uh, have a, essentially a close to a short circuit. And so current would flow there. There's a device called a thermistor. And if we plot... I versus V here, that would be a, a nonlinear relationship. This is uh, just the opposite curve of the bulb. This actually has a negative temperature uh, coefficient, so uh, the resistance would go down as it gets hotter, and that has some of its own applications too. And here's some actual pictures of some devices. This is a uh, light sensitive resistor, this is a cadmium, cadmium sulfide cell, and uh, as light hits it, um, the resistance changes. This is a circuit uh, diagram symbol for a light sensitive uh, uh, resistor and these are negative temperature coefficient um, uh, thermistors here and this is the circuit symbol for a th thermistor we're going to see more about cir circuit symbols later let's look at a couple other components um, this again is light dependent resistor so what would those um, characteristics look like if we plot those resistance against the amount of light so as the amount of light gets more the resistance in this case would go down and it is a nonlinear type relationship there. Uh, in terms of the uh, thermistor, this resistance would change with temperature and it would have similar, similar uh, dependence here. So as uh, the temperature goes up, the resistance goes down. And uh, it's to brainstorm a little bit, we've got a uh, circuit here with uh, a resistor. This is a circuit uh, symbol for a resistor. This is a circuit symbol for a battery. Sorry to throw this at you. We'll see this formally a little bit later. And down here we have a light dependent resistor. And this is going to change depending on how much light is falling upon it. And down here we have a very similar circuit, but instead of the light dependent resistor we have a thermistor. So can you imagine any kind of applications for these devices? Um, if you can't, the hint might be uh, here, you need to do something. The circuit needs to take some sort of action or give a signal or change somehow when the light changes, the ambient light changes. And likewise, this one down here, you need to take some sort of action when uh, the temperature changes. So um, this might be here a um, you know a switch that um, you know turns on when it gets dark. Uh, if you don't want it to, uh, like a street light has has something like this on them, and uh, thermistors, well, it might be uh, like a thermostat that when your house gets too cold, it turns on the heater. And um, let's see, and what am I going to go here? Uh, it's got a little. Um, okay, yeah, we're going to stop here. We're going to go back, um, and that's the end of uh, this section. Okay, bye.